Hello and welcome to Oh the Horror. I'm Fedora, and yeah, we've seen a few horror movie icons venture into the depths of space. The likes of Jason Voorhees, Pinhead, or Dragon. Oh, fuck! But if you think that any of that was weird, then you haven't even smelled batshit crazy until you've seen Warwick Davis's Leprechaun take to the cosmos. The story of the Leprechaun franchise is pretty easy to tell. As almost every movie in it is a standalone, with arguably a different Leprechaun every time, which are all played by Warwick Davis. I say arguably because the Leprechaun's powers, limitations, and motivations change rapidly from entry to entry. However, one thing remains the same throughout the series. I need me gold! I want me gold! I want me gold! I want me gold! Have I mentioned that I want me gold? So we've seen him slashing up faces on farmlands, unsuccessfully wooing his bride-to-be in a hollowed-out tree cave, and Botox women to death in Las Vegas. But now, the Leprechaun faces his greatest challenge. Space. More specifically... <phone rings> Leprechaun 4. In Space. So this movie starts in space! Get out of town! And here we have a giant phallic symbol roaring through the cosmos. All the graphical power of the Sega CDI. And inside, we have this group of army peoples putting together their, again, very futuristic guns before the Terminator walks in. I need a vacation. We are orbiting the planet of Ithacon. Our mission is search and destroy. We've been chasing this alien son of a bitch long enough. Now, what is our motto? Wear a helmet when riding your bike, sir. Good. Major Chrome Dome is interrupted though when the lovely Dr. Reeves enters the room after she's been assigned to his platoon to gather samples of alien life by the mission's financer, Dr. Mittenhand. What is it? Oh, I'm sorry, I must have accidentally turned on Austin Powers. Dr. Reeves is the ship's biological officer and my personal assistant. Oh wait, this actually is their boss. You have your orders, Sergeant. I suggest you follow them. Don't mess with me, I'm one crazy mofo. I had to pop a cop because he wasn't giving me my props in Oaktown. Boss! Sir, yes sir! You've been assigned to love interest duty, maggot! Meanwhile, on the planet below, the leprechaun is having a candlelit dinner with slave attire Princess Leia. <laughs> <laughs> Laugh if you like me, darling, but I'll have me way. So, the Leprechaun is the alien bastard the soldiers are after, huh? So, he's an alien in this movie. And do you know why I'm not slapping my head in frustration like I did with Dracula 3000's bullshit Aliens are Vampires plot? Because this series has been stupid since the original. It's about a killer Leprechaun who rhymes all the time. What's that? He doesn't rhyme once in this movie? BLASPHEMY! The soldiers land on the planet, and wow. Does that look fucking terrible or what? And this cave looks like the inside of the monster's anus. I've seen worse. You ever been to Detroit? There's a Robocop 3 joke in there somewhere. Hey buddy, what did I just say in the opening about the leprechaun and his gold? Does anybody listen to me? I just saw a leprechaun kill somebody with a lightsaber. Must be a Bob show! A gunfight ensues between him and the remaining soldiers until a grenade is thrown, landing next to the princess! Get down! This is truly a love that will never die. Nice to know Call of Duty players are still around in the future. <laughs> oh, shit! Oh, you know what? I really don't envy what'll no doubt happen to you later, buddy. 
They return to the USS compensating with the unconscious princess and a whole mess of gold from that cave. Pfft. A shrinking ray? Well, now that's just unrealistic. Dr. Evilhand calls them back up and tells them that until a mining crew can arrive to get the rest of the gold out of the cave, their ship is not allowed to leave orbit. What are we mining for again, sir? Uh, unobtainium? What? No, that's a stupid name. So let's revert to type. Here's the nasty sex and women who never say no. Ah! Yeah. Yeah. Ah! Here's the lucky. The Marino gave his life today. Hey, I can't get a hard on to that. Boo! Oop, looks like Piss Soldier's finally paying his dues. Back over with the princess, and... Ew. I hope an Irish man rips out of his junk. Although now I think these two are far more interested in the fact that the princess's hand that was shattered in the grenade explosion has somehow completely repaired itself. Something Dr. Evil Hand hopes to gene splice out of her. The soldiers begin their hunt for the leprechaun, which for some reason takes them to the ship's toxic waste disposal area. Oh, never mind, he is in there. And luckily they happen to have a hazmat suit in his size, too. Well, I guess it's a good thing the hazardous waste area full of... Flesh-eating bacteria. ...is set up like some kind of fun house. I bet that really lightens up the workers' mundane days. What's in here? <laughs> hmm. What is that, anthrax? Oh, you guys. So yeah, Leprechaun slashes a guy's suit open and he turns into a big gooey mummy. <whistles> but after all this, Dr. Evil Hand still won't let them leave orbit. No one leaves this ship without my permission. No one! Uh... Davros? I'll do the jokes. Well, I can guess we can wrangle a guess as to why he wants the princess's regeneration powers now. So, in between turning into paper mache between cuts, Dr. Evil Hand eventually gets everyone to agree to stay and fight by just offering them a lot of money. How much? Billions? Sounds good to me. So they all split up to search the dark hallways. And before Jason can show up to start offing them one at a time, we get another leprechaun on TV gag, like in the third movie. And you know what? I fully dig the leprechaun reading PSAs. And watch out for naked flames. Oh, as Shakespeare said, shit happens. Ah! Authorised by the Australian Government, Canberra. Well, they managed to track him down, at least. And oh, Jesus, how many Warwick Davises are we going to blow up in this movie? Well, at least nobody had to piss him out this time. <laughs> Tina. She's gone. No, she can't be dead. I've known her for an entire hour. Avenge me! And now for the meeting we've all been waiting for. Do not... Let my appearance fool you. I was about to say the same thing. <laughs> DNA? <laughs> A little added spice. Well, I can say this, the MCU's Spider-Man reboot sure is different. And after a quick gunfight and a little magic to take the sergeant here hostage, the leprechaun and the princess have the remaining soldiers at their mercy. This is your fate. You have no one to blame but yourselves. Unspeakable pain awaits you. Look upon them and know that you are forever doomed. I leave you now. Well, I'm glad that had a point. Don't get too excited, boys. On the planet Dominia, when a woman of royal blood shows you her breasts, it's 
a death sentence. Oh, <laughs> well now it makes perfect sense. Well, after everything he's done so far, what foul fate could the leprechaun have in mind for the sergeant? <laughs> well, of course. I think we're all in agreement that this madness has gone on for quite long enough now, as the leprechaun activates the ship's self-destruct system. But as we know, he cannot leave without his precious gold. So while he and the princess search for it, that gives our heroes time to catch up. Another gunfight ensues. <sighs> Seriously, dude, you do know you have magic, right? Oh, never mind. The reader repulsor angle is actually a much better idea. Magic one, make my monster grow. All right. And that be why they call me the Jolly Green Giant. Reeves heads to shut down the self-destruct system, which is being guarded by David Cronenberg's fucking acid trip. Oh, and it manages to tear her pants off. I guess in Dominion logic that is seven years in prison with bail available after three? Sub-Zero wins. Fatality. Sylvester Stalame, however, is still running from the giant leprechaun. But now that Reeves is back at the controls, they manage to blow open the airlock doors and suck him out into space. <laughs> Third time's the charm, right? So after cancelling the self-destruct, this movie comes to an end with us getting flipped off. Yep, that's how I feel. And that was Leprechaun 4 in space. Is there even a point to judging this movie? I, I mean, it does a far better job of insulting itself than I ever could. It's nonsensical, messy, awfully written and acted. But I tell you, you're sure not going to be bored watching it. And hey, while ignoring the really bad CG visuals on the spaceship and such, I will give props to the makeup department. The look of the Doctor in his cyborg and spider forms was actually really good. And of course, who can't love Warwick in this role? He's just as fun to watch as ever. This may be too silly for most viewers, but series fans should hopefully still get a kick out of it. Now this movie was probably over here on this side of the spectrum, the stupid, ridiculous, but fun. But there is something down here, down in the dark, dull corners. I know it's pretty hard to accept considering the subject, but it's true, and we'll be taking a look at that next time. But until then, I'm Fedora, this is Earth the Horror, save a screen for me, and we'll see you next time. Take the baseline arrow. No, you don't have to. Bounce with it.